Hi, I'm Toby Huffman. Today I'm going to be doing a series of demonstrations covering the basics of throwing on the potter's wheel. Before I get started, I'm going to quickly go over the tools you're going to need and how to prepare your clay. The tools come in a basic potter's tool kit. This is a kit that you can purchase online at an art supply store or one of your local pottery suppliers. In this kit, you have a sponge, a metal rib, a wooden rib, a cutoff wire, two metal loops for trimming, a needle tool, and a wooden knife tool. Along with these tools, you're going to need a bucket. And the bucket is for putting water in, so you have water when you're working at the wheel. Um, once you have the, all your tools and you have them all set up at your wheel, you have to have your clay ready. I'm going to quickly wedge up some clay, kind of talk about what I'm doing, and I'll be ready to work at the wheel. Now, when you're wedging your clay, you don't want to wedge a really small amount of clay. You want to be working with an amount of clay that you can actually get your hands on. Right here, I've got about a half a bag of clay, which is equal to 12 and a half pounds of clay from a half a bag. I'm going to start wedging, and what I'm doing is I'm pushing down evenly with both hands, controlling the ends of the clay so it doesn't roll out like a big long tube. So I rock the clay up, grab it, push it in, and this is called ram's horn wedging. And this is how I usually will start on a fresh bag of clay in the wedging process. And the reason it's called ram's horn wedging is as you're wedging it, it rolls up on the sides and it ends up looking like a set of ram's horns. The reason I'm wedging is because the clay that I'm using is clay that I've mixed myself and it's very fluffy and it has a lot of air in it. What wedging does is it compresses the clay and it removes the air from within the clay body. Another reason to wedge is if you have a clay that has a lot of inconsistencies in it, where it might have wet clay and dry clay mixed together, you have to get that clay worked out so it's all even. You don't want to sit down at the potter's wheel and have a lump of wet and a lump of dry and your hands won't work well with that. So you have to get it worked through the clay body in the wedging process. <clears throat> Another reason is if you have a clay body that's really wet, most of the time you're working on a canvas covered tabletop and the canvas will start sucking the moisture out of the clay body and make it a little bit more workable. One thing when you're wedging is you want to be on a table that's a comfortable height to work on. If the table's too tall, you can't get any pressure pushed down on the clay. It's better to work on a shorter table than a tall table. So I've been doing what's the ram's horn wedging. And now I'm going to switch over to what's called spiral wedging. With the spiral wedging, instead of pushing evenly with both hands down, I start pushing more with one hand and I'm twisting the clay as I roll it back up. And you'll see that I push down and give it a twist and I roll it up on one side. And it starts to spiral up just on this one edge and it starts to look like a seashell. And you can see it's only spiraling over on this one side. It's got that shell shape. When I'm Wedging in this fashion, all the air will be expelled along this left-hand side. And if you have big air bubbles, you'll actually hear them pop. And you can actually see them popping. One of the problems the beginning student will have when they're learning how to wedge is that they push too hard on the clay. You want to just give it good, firm nudges downward. You don't want to smear the clay across the table 
because if you push too hard, put big pockets in the clay with the heels of your hand, you'll fold it back over on itself and create big air bubbles. And then you're doing more harm than good. You're making it even harder to work with instead of easier. And how long it takes to wedge, it's hard to say. It depends on how wet your clay is, how full of air it is. An experienced potter can feel in the clay that it starts to stiffen up. You've expelled a lot of the air out of it, a lot of the moisture has gotten pulled out into the canvas top, and the, the clay body just starts to get stiff. Again, this is a lot of work, as you can see and hear. I'm already starting to lose my breath. This is a really good workout. And for a beginning student doing this, you're gonna fill it in your arms. Now this clay feels pretty good and it's ready, it's ready to go. Now all I have to do is roll it out into a bigger coil, cut it into sections for the weights that I wanna use, and I'm ready to get going on the wheel.